And I want to deal with this. The Bible says this, that we need to be harmless and blameless. Harmless and blameless. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, 14 and 15. It says this, do all things without complaining and disputing. Now, disputing means fighting. I want you to understand something here. I want to just interject. The next verse is what I'm really focusing on. But I want you to know, it is not our job to fight. It's not our job to argue. We get into vain arguments so many times. The Bible says that we are called to bring peace. All right, now you can sit down and have an opinion. There are many times when I have an opinion and I actually have to hold back. Now I know sometimes I miss it because I'm very fast with my mouth. But I'll tell you what, I've had to learn to hold back. Because that argument actually does not, or that disagreement or that disputing does not bring glory and it does not bring life. Verse 15 of Philippians 2 is where I want to focus. That you may become blameless. In other words, I can't accuse you of stuff. And number two, most important, harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. All right, among whom you shine as lights in this world. I want to tell you right now, God's making it very clear. The generation we are living in is crooked. It is perverse. It is terrible. Don't you climb into that arena. Your challenge should be, God, what can I do without fighting? What can I do to bring life? What can I do to bring peace? What can I do to bring a diffusing of the situation? You see, it's really important that we as believers take a stand for righteousness. And righteousness means to do things correctly, the right way of doing something. And so we need to take a stand and say, God, help me do the right thing in this situation. Now, the right thing is not always the obvious thing. You know, obviously you can fight the thing and know, sometimes you are 100% right. That's the sad part. But it's not the wisest thing to do at that time. And so wherever you go, whatever you're busy with, you say, God, help me bring peace into this thing. Help me defuse the situation. Help me be the one that is the light. I want you to see verse 15. It says this, among whom you shine as lights in this world. My question to you today is this. Are you shining as a light? Are you shining as a light in this world? You see, God is looking for us to be different from the world. And so we can't climb into this worldly system. God is not going to use us in that worldly system. He needs us to come in with a different spirit, a change to bring peace and to bring a desired outcome in Jesus' name. All right, so this morning as we come around the table, let us celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ has paid the price, but that he has given us an ability to come with a different spirit. Light and dark are not in the same camp. In order to have light, you've got something that is generating that light. In our, in our case, it's the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit that will help us change our attitude, help us change our action, help us even control our emotion so that we can be a blessing. Let's pray together. On the night that Jesus betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. He took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take it in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our provision, our salvation, and our protection. So let's pray. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you please to forgive me. Lord, of any unrighteousness, any wrong thing, any wrong thought, action, motive, intention. Lord, I ask you please to wash me white as snow. Lord, I thank you that we can stand as right, righteous people before you. 
Lord, right now I pray that we will be peacemakers. And Lord, that we will be the ones that nobody can accuse. And Lord, that we will come and defuse any situation that rises up. Father, I pray for your leading and your spirit to lead us and guide us, to help us with our own emotions, to help us with our own uh, feelings. But Lord, I thank you right now that you are going to help us make the godly decisions in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together, saints. Lord, I ask you right now to move by your spirit in our physical bodies. Lord, I command a healing from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that your word says that by your stripes we were healed. And I command every single symptom to leave our bodies right now. Thank you, Lord, that we walk in divine health in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I'm just so excited. I can't tell you how much I love the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's doing. I want to tell you right now, listen to this for a testimony. We have been praying, all right? We've been praying over these elections. We knew that there was pressure on these elections. We knew that it was very, very close because what happens is when people see that they are losing something, there could be an ignition into violence or ugly things. I want to tell you right now, the report came through on News 24 a little while ago that the uh, Minister of uh, Policing and Security said this, that the political assassinations have dwindled in our nation. I want to thank you for standing in the gap. These elections could have turned really ugly. All right. Now we need to pray for wisdom with these coalitions. There are so many places that there have to be coalitions. Like I tried to help the, the nation understand this. No nation can rule, uh, no party can rule by themselves. They need these coalitions to genuinely govern the municipalities now. And so this morning, we are going to pray over the wisdom for these coalitions. And we're going to pray over our economy. All right, I'm trusting God for a turnaround in this economy in Jesus' name. I'm not accepting these reports. And I'm not going to accept the fact that, we, that there's talk of a lockdown over December. We are going to pray this open, saints. We are going to believe God that December is going to be a good rest for every single South African. That South Africa can take a break from the pressure we've had over the last two years. All right, we are not going to stand for this. So let's pray together. Lord, right now I pray over the, the coalitions. Father, I pray for wisdom. Lord, I pray right now, just as you moved in the election, God, I pray right now that you will move with these negotiations. And Lord, where the parties are busy negotiating, where they can work together. Father, I pray for godly wisdom. Lord, that you're going to show them exactly how to structure this and how to do this so that our municipalities will deliver proper uh, service delivery and that corruption will be eradicated in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for favor. I pray for favor of righteous men and women that are standing there. Give them the positions of influence. Give them the positions that will make a difference and so that they can genuinely stand and show the wisdom that is flowing from you. Lord, I thank you right now that there's going to be unity and there's going to be peace in each and every municipality in our nation. Father, we thank you for your blessing and anointing to flow in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, right now, I pray over the economy of South Africa. I pray for every single business. Lord, I thank you for every, every business that has a believer in it, the way they are trusting you, believing you, holding altars, restricting the demonic. Father, I thank you right now that our businesses are prospering in Jesus' name. Lord, that supernatural deals, divine connections, supernatural contracts will come through. And Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that our economy will turn around in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for a supernatural move of your spirit for each and everyone involved in Jesus' name.
Lord, right now, I pray over everybody who's writing exams. Lord, I pray for a supernatural retention and that they'll remember what they had learned. Lord, I pray for your blessing over every student that's writing right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I also pray for the parents. Lord, I pray for the parents where some of the parents are taking some of the strain as well. Lord, I thank you that you're going to help the parents and bless each and every family in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now we pray over this COVID situation. And Lord, I command every bit of COVID to leave our nation in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that every hospital has zero COVID patients. And in the name of Jesus, we release life. We release blessing. We release the prosperity of God over our nation in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, we come against the devil's plan, assignment, demonic agreement, word spoken, and fear sown that there is going to be a lockdown in December in Jesus' mighty name. We come against that in Jesus' name. We stand in agreement that December is going to be open, December is going to be blessed, and December is going to be prosperous for each and every person in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for a supernatural rest over December. Lord, that December is going to be an awesome month of reviving, refreshing, and revitalizing. And creative ideas to flow when we rest. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to bless you. I want to thank you for standing in the gap, being part of this. But I want to remind you that tonight is the book of Revelation. I'm busy with the fifth seal. And this is where the earth starts having some issues. So the planet itself... So come and find out what it's all about. Tonight at 7 o'clock, we're busy with the book of Revelation. And so tomorrow morning, I'm right back with communion. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And know that Jesus Christ is alive. All right. So from my side, God bless you. We love you lots. I will see you tomorrow morning. Amen.